In this episode, we continue our jam-packed voyage on and around the enormous Lake Tai. From autumn eats and amphibian villages to the everyday lives of the locals, whether butchers, farmers or retirees, this is the second of a two-part series in delightful Dongshan. to do the entire perimeter though because it's about 400 kilometers uh, but 26 of them belong to Dongshan so I might give that a go let's see how long I last <laughs> going uphill now it's a bit of a slog <sighs> the weather doesn't look too nice at the moment but according to the forecast it's gonna turn out to be a better day I hope so let's see what we can find along the way I'm pedaling around Lake Tai or Tai Hu in Mandarin which is China's third largest freshwater lake. The town of Dongshan is situated on a headland that sticks out into the lake's eastern corner. Here, I'm 30 kilometers southwest from Jiangsu province's second largest city, Suzhou. Whew, getting a bit sweaty now, but I've heard that there's a uh, village on the banks of Taihu Lake and it's called Xixiang, Frog Village. I'm really curious to find out what it's all about. I'm pretty sure this is it. Located at Dongshan's western tip, Xixiang is home to just over 200 people and 61 species of frogs. Frogs are bioindicators, in other words, their presence is a gauge of a healthy environment. This amphibian kingdom is the fruit of a rural reconstruction project aimed at preserving the village's ecological well-being and promoting ecotourism. And I get to meet the man behind it all. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> This Taiwanese designer was able to bring his unique cultural and creative oh. concepts to the Chinese mainland with the support of Xixiang's village head, Mr. Lu. And with their team, they've transformed a poor backwater into a self-sustaining wonderland. Ishi 它很低 enchanting atmosphere of rustic nostalgia fills Xixiang. I definitely haven't come across any other Chinese village like this, yet it feels 100% authentic. Yes, it's rather avant-garde instead of the art, but importantly, it's respectful of the Suzhou region's elegant ambience and typical architectural style. I'm more than impressed. The accommodation you can find here in Xixiang is worthy of a double spread in a super swanky travel magazine ultra-modern yet earthy, and really just sublime. It's a decked-out bed-and-breakfast place with an authentic feel and view. But perhaps best of all, and what I feel is the most exceptional aspect of Xixiang, 
is how it's been revived without obliterating the corroded, crumbling charm of the place. In fact, for me, the froggy graffiti and installations really add to it. Just walking around this village, I really can't wipe the smile off my face because I just really love how the frog theme has somehow embraced all these old original elements and, and appearance of this village. I mean, look at this. It's, uh, I think it's the drainage pipe from someone's kitchen and they've made it into a tongue. How cool is that? Super cute. And with one last look behind at Lake Tai's amphibian dominion, I head to a very different place in Dongshan. Several kilometers inland from Xixiang lies Zijin An, a Buddhist temple nestled in greenery. The moment I step into the compound, a wave of tranquility engulfs me. Somewhere in here, veiled in vegetation, is a place of worship lined with famous Arhat statues. An Arhat is someone who has attained Nirvana, the ultimate goal of the Buddhist path. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to find my way, and there's someone who can show me. Uh 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 the second and third treasures are the canopy on Buddha's palanquin and this handkerchief. Though they're molded from clay, they're convincingly cloth with their soft folds rippling in the breeze. But these treasures aren't the only remarkable things about this place. These arhats, or lohan in Mandarin, were crafted with lifelike countenances and proportions, making them national cultural relics. You know, out of all the 16 lohan sculptures in here, I think this one is definitely my favourite. Not just because it's got a blue beard, but because of its expression and the detail, you know, the, the folds in his clothing and the way his head is a little bit tilted listening to the spirit creature telling him something while he's watching the door because that's his role, he's guarding this place. You know, it's incredible that these sculptures, these clay effigies have been here for 800 years and yet they're still so intact and so beautiful. Behind the Arhat Hall, I find a man stooped over his wooden workbench, absorbed in chiseling masterpieces of his own. This is Hwa 
，几乎是每家每户都都住念台为生。那你有你有传给你的孩子吗？没有，我儿子学学了三个月跑了，嫌苦嫌累。一下子不是一天两天能够学会的。对。I watch Mr. Qian at work, admiring his focus, his precision, his strength. I'd give up too after three minutes. 我带你去看看我做的作品。好啊，好啊。现在有很多人买那个燕吗？呃，也现在也不多。不多了。主要是。现在写字的人太少了。哦、oh. 哎。我给你看看啊。哦、oh, ，好。就像这个念台。Ink stones and mortars used for grinding and holding ink, and were an essential stationary tool for ancient scholars. Evidently, they're not just functional; they're exquisite works of art, and they're not the only thing that Mr. Qian can carve. Hmm. Tea time, anyone? It's such a nice view, all these tangerine trees outside. I'm now in a little tea house that's right next to the temple. And I can't wait to get my hands around a warm cup of tea because it's just kind of getting a little bit chilly now. It is autumn after all. So with a plate of seasonal jinko nuts, I've ordered steaming bilo chun tea, a local beverage that's often regarded as one of the ten great Chinese green teas. Ah, that's better. A well-deserved breather before we continue our Dongshan journey. Coming up next on Travelog, we're up before the sun. A fun pre-dawn grocery run at the local morning markets, and yep, we're at it again, eating our way through Dongshan. In this episode, we continue our jam-packed voyage on and around the enormous Lake Tai. From autumn eats and amphibian villages to the everyday lives of the locals, whether butchers, farmers, or retirees, this is the second of a two-part series in delightful Dongshan. While much of China is still sleeping, the locals of Lu Xiang Village on the banks of Lake Tai are up and ready for some shopping by lamplight. I'm not exactly a fan of getting out of bed before sunrise, especially not to do my groceries. But here, it's just the way it's always been. It's uh, not even 5:30 yet in the morning, but this market is already bustling, and I've got this young, lovely、uh, hotel owner with me, <laughs> and she's、uh, going to show me where she goes to buy her vegetables and other ingredients for the meal that we're going to eat later today. This is the、uh, bull sheep, the lamb that they、uh, take home, wrap in leaves, and then they put it in their noodles in the morning for brekkie. It's the meat of a local breed of sheep, and people here love it. Yeah, it's a pretty hearty breakfast.、Hey? Getting up early may be a chore, but it means the produce you can buy is really, really flounderingly fresh. Wow! That is gigantic. What a monstrosity of a fish! Down here in Dongshan range is far more varied than northern China. There are greens that can't be grown in Beijing. Well, different climate, different cuisine. 帮我称点水芹，可以吗？哎。耶！哇，这个是什么？哦，这个是当地的一种糕点，比较特色的糕点——猪油糕。哦。猪油糕啊，老祖宗传下来的。是吗？哎，我们过年的时候都要做那个年糕，上面有核桃。松子肉、瓜子肉、红枣、红丝露丝，还有蜜枣，好吃吗？好吃。不要不要，尝一点。好好我去拿回到。我好啊好啊好啊。好啊<笑> Getting some of these uh traditional traditional breakfasts in my belly will be good. 嗯，这女子好吃。好吃吗？好吃。这个卤子也好吃，美食。还有这个呢，寿桃。嗯，我们生了小孩，就是要外婆，外婆要带到那个呃南家去
I think it's, it's a form of um, longevity. So it represents longevity. It's like, here you go, here's, here's for you and your little baby. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. That is really good. It's it's sweet. Just in this heat, there is also a warm. Mm. Eat it. It's a bit. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. yeah. It's a bit gooey. Yeah. <laughs> bit gooey, but I love it. Anything glutinous is is delicious, even though it sticks to my teeth. It's really good. How much? How much? Hmm. Men, every day, this early. Our husband, every day, eat dinner first. Two hours. Is it? To the beach, eat sato. Oh wow. This sato is his father's recipe. Oh. Wow. So two thirty in the morning, they have to. Ah. These veggies are so cute. I love it. Later on in the day, during my preferred standard hours of consciousness, it's time for one of my favorite pastimes: eating. Thanks to a culinary genius, the in-house chef at Lu Xiang's Lan Ting Yue Hu Hotel. So this chef, Chef Zhu. He, you know what? His his、uh, ancestors actually cooked for the emperor. How crazy is that? That's incredible. <laughs>、um, but now he's going to prepare for us an autumn feast. So right here in front of us, we see some、uh, specialties that are found in autumn, and these are the ingredients that we'll be using later. This is the most famous dish of the Tai Wu Emperor. Ah, Tai Wu Three Bay. This is Tai Wu Bay Yu. Ah, this is Tai Wu Yin Yu. White bait. 哎，这泰国的白虾 ，white shrimp， 白鱼最好，我们一般都是新鲜的。只要泰国吃了，就就就什么最新鲜了。你放冰箱总归不不那么好。这个是菱角，这个藕，啊 ，lotus root， 这个鸡头米，嗯哼，春天嘛，这个最有名的赛宝的，啊，我们叔叔他们一般都都是用甜的为主，那再放一点料酒，啊，一定很好吃的，啊，好了吧，好了吧，啊 ，let's do this。I watched Chef Zhu cook up a Suzhou storm. Suzhou cuisine is recognized for its subtle and sweet flavors, which come from meticulously selected ingredients and consummate kitchen skills. Here in Dongshan, gourmet culture is deeply entrenched, taking advantage of Lake Tai's plentiful aquatic produce and the sundry assortment of vegetables. Chef Zhu's movements are famously nimble, and within minutes, lunch is served. Oh my gosh, there's so much food. It's it's truly a royal royal banquet. It's very good. It's just, no, 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 它会比较有弹性，不会很死气的那种。对，我也觉得 ，it's like it's really、uh, squishy. Yeah. Everything between my chopsticks is perfectly balanced. I'm in gastronomic heaven right now. Good food, good company. What could be better? Mm. Even vegetables are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> What I really like about、um, Dongshan cuisine is that you know it's so local, but also. It's it's presented so like in such a sophisticated style, and the taste is so delicate and fresh. It's beautiful. Coming up next, a look into the locals' lives in Dongshan, from horticulturists on a minuscule Lake Tai island to retirees whose idea of everyday entertainment is probably not like yours. There are 48 islands on Taihu, and only several of them are inhabited. One of them is called Yushan Dao, and it's quite a jewel on the water because it's largely unsullied by tourism. Now, this gentleman here is going to take me across on this ferry. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Just there. Here we go. You quickly get there? Ah, two minutes. So quick, two minutes, and we'll be there.
Well, here's some quick trivia for the quick ride. Lake Tai is believed to be a colossal water-filled crater formed by meteor impact 70 million years ago. Cool fact, hey? For me, it's the first time ever setting foot on an inhabited island of such teeny tiny proportions. The landmass is just 0.3 square kilometres, around three quarters the size of Tiananmen Square, surrounded by spans of silver swells. Just a handful of families call Yushan Island home, living extraordinarily simple, natural lives. And like many rural villages in China, it's the oldies and the grandkiddies who've stayed. And their pets. I instantly fall in love with the place. Its bucolic clutter, its mossy cobblestone paths, its unruly foliage, and the glistening lake tie. And the people, tough and industrious, surviving off the land. Their main source of income is tangerines, which ripen in the autumn. The island is draped in trees with branches that droop with the weight of these luscious citrus fruits. Those harvested from Yushan Island are known for being extra sweet because of the copious sunshine they get. Ah! Takes a lot of concentration. <laughs> While I'm mucking around, the locals are hard at work. And now I feel like an idle, ignorant circus fool. Wow, that is a really heavy load. <laughs> okay, back to taking my job more seriously then. It's time oh. to find out what day-to-day -day life is like for the villagers of Yushan Island. So now we're following one of the farmers, one of the locals on this island, and he's going to take me up to where he's got some tangerine trees. Every family on this island has a patch of land to grow tangerines, and it's just about peak tangerine season, so baskets fill up fast. After a short uphill climb, we reach a clearing. That is so cool. Seedless tangerines. <laughs> it may look effortless, but the fruit is so, well, fruitful that it's back-breaking work, not to be taken lightly. Whoa, that's a hundred kilos of tangerines a tree. Yum! It's so sweet and seedless. But tangerines aren't the only cultivated produce on Yushan Island. It's like a living, growing market here. Oh, Oh, that's the chestnut. So interesting how there are all these different types of trees planted in the same area. Besides horticulture, the Yushan locals also raise fowl. It's a small, self-sufficient community with enough to provide subsistence and modest luxuries. It's a lifestyle that I could never adopt, but I can appreciate. Anyway, with a raucous send-off, I say goodbye to the island. It's back over the shimmering Lake Tai for us, back to the peninsula. Of course, some Dongshan residents are retired, so life now is a little less demanding for them. Hmm, 
I didn't quite expect to be going to a senior citizen's community centre this soon in my life, but I'm not going to say no to some local traditional entertainment. I didn't grow up with grandparents, so I've always had a special, unoccupied space in my heart for other people's ones. Pink time is a regional variety of the short tongue, which is speak and sing, a storytelling. Now, it originated around this area about 400 years ago. It still remains a popular, you know, uh, everyday entertainment. is hushed, allowing the music to wash over the room like the luminous waters of the lake. The intoxicating twangs of stringed instruments, their hypnotic, lyrical voices. For some, it's like having an afternoon nap while listening to the radio. For others, it's like watching a play. Even though I don't understand the dialect, Ping Tan speaks and sings to me with its rhythm and refrain, and it compares in beauty with the sunset over Lake Tai. You know, autumn has always been my favourite season, and it's the best time to come to Dongshan, especially if you're a seafood fiend. Now, yes, you can listen to Ping Tan with the oldies and go for a stroll through villages where, you know, tradition meets modernity, but perhaps best of all, you can gorge yourself on imperial autumn feasts and juicy tangerines and, of course, the hairy taihu crab. I reckon I've gotten a pretty good taste of autumn in Dongshan. My name's Dui. See you next time on Travelog.